You are listening to Mining Stock Education, where you'll learn from the top leaders in the natural resource sector and uncover quality mining investment opportunities. We anticipate having a minimum of four plants in the U.S. that will, with the numbers that I'm talking about, reach us to a, a market cap of approximately a billion dollars. Once you hit that magic number of a billion dollar market cap, the multiples take on a totally new venue, if you like, in up to 60 times uh, value. So you can just take it from there. We're at a, at a $30 million stock now uh, from, from a market cap. I mean, uh, our, our market cap, once we get to a billion, the listeners can take out their pens and figure out the numbers themselves uh, as opposed to me telling them. But the upside is high. Welcome back to Mining Stock Education. I'm your host, Bill Powers. And today we're going to get an update from Regenex Tech Corp. Regenex has a proprietary system in which they're able to extract 90% of the platinum and palladium from recycled diesel catalytic converters. In the industry, smelters no longer want diesel catalytic converters, so they're hitting the landfills. And this is a billion dollar opportunity, multi-billion dollar opportunity that Regenix is taking advantage of. They've just now commissioned the first module of a four module plant in Tennessee. And this plant is the first of hopefully many as, as they grow out this, this business plan. But we've had success getting all the parts here, putting it together, the plants assembled, it's commissioned. And over the next 90 days, they're gonna lead into commercial production. So joining me is Rick Purdy. He's the president of US Operations, as well as the CEO, Greg Pandura. Greg and Rick, welcome back onto the show. And Greg, could you please give an update about this achievement that you've been able to accomplish there in Tennessee? Sure, Th thanks, Bill. Um, yeah, the plants, as you were saying, it up and running, we're happy about that. The commissioning process, uh, now we'll take approximately about a 90 day period period of time to go from our one pound a day of through, throughput to get to our uh, two and a half tons per day of throughput for, for module one. That will be the anticipated volume for that particular mod module. Uh, with only one module in that facility, it will put the company into a positive cash flow to position uh, for the first time in its history. So. If you're a junior and if you have hit that milestone, it's significant. So we're pretty excited about that, Bill. So, Greg, as we're talking about the potential valuation for Regenix and where you want to go, not just with this Tennessee plant, but over a multi-plant build-out over the next few years, can you talk about valuations? What should your valuation be? What is a realistic expectation from the investor side of what the company's valuation should be as you're successful with this first plant and then also as you build out more plants? Just to give the the uh, audience an idea here, right right, right now our, our market cap's about 30 million Canadian at the pre present time. In one plant, which will generate approximately $15 million a year, technology companies at this stage of development are typically about to uh, have a multiple of 15. So that, that will equate us to a market cap of about 225 million compared to where we are right now at 30. So that, that's just a an idea from one plant in, in operation. We anticipate having uh, uh, at a minimum of, of four plants in the US that will, with the numbers that I'm talking about, reach us to a, a market cap of approximately a billion dollars. Once you hit that magic number of a billion dollar market cap, the multiples take on a totally new venue, if you like, in up to 60 times uh, value. So you can just take it from there. We're, we're, we're at, a, at a $30 million stock now uh, from, from a market cap. I mean, uh, our, our market cap, once we get to a billion, the listeners can take out their pens and figure out the numbers themselves uh, as opposed to me telling them. But the upside is high. If we only do five plants in, in the U.S., we'd be barely scraping the market. That's only two and a half percent of the available spent diesel catalytic converter uh, uh, material that's available there. We're not talking about international expansion. We're not, we're just talking about four plants in the, in the U.S. Each new plant can get developed in nine months. Our scale up is very, very quick. Everything that we do is going to be a cookie cutter approach. It's very easy to replicate one plant after the next, 
because all the work's been done already. So from an upside perspective, we believe it's very, very strong. Rick, uh, on the operational front, uh, can you give us an update? You're, you're standing outside the facility now for those watching on YouTube. Uh, what, are, what are you seeing at the ground floor level? Yeah, it's exciting times for our company. We, uh, we've accomplished something very substantial here, getting this module hooked up in, in the amount of time that it took us. <clears throat> it was just excellent. Uh, how everything came together on the trades and, and our equipment arriving, uh, dealing with all the things that you have to deal when you're uh, buying equipment and getting it installed. Uh, we were able to hit our timelines and uh, we're very excited about it. Uh, we're starting to run material and, and uh, some liquid tests and so on here starting right now as commissioning gets going. And the, the team is just ecstatic. We're really excited to get moving here and get this thing operational over the next 90 days. Rick, you're essentially uh, running a mill, the last stage of the mining process with what you're doing. And your partner, Davis Recycling, is providing the ore, so to speak, in the the, the decanned honeycombs from the diesel catalytic converters. Um, but what I liked about this story and why I invested and took the company on as a sponsor is that you don't have to deal with the federal government, do you, with what you're doing? And you don't have to go through a long permitting process to accomplish what you want to do. That's correct. Yeah, we uh, we went through the state of Tennessee. We got all of our required permits to uh, to run operation here and get going. Uh, but on the the supply side, Davis Recycle takes care of everything on the supply, auditing the material, uh, getting it ground down and ready for us to run through the process. So we don't have to worry about that side of the business. We just have to do what we do best. And uh, yeah, we're uh, we're ready. You basically have to get just an occupancy permit, such as any manufacturing okay. facility in Tennessee would need. That's right. Yeah, we had to get uh, air uh, permit as well as wastewater and so on, which we achieved uh, with uh, hands down. So it, it, it's all done and ready to go. And now we're off and running. So, And the wastewater, that yeah. just goes right back into the muni municipal system too, right? It's because it's harmless. Yeah. Yes, that's right. We can do that. That's correct. Absolutely. So we're putting the Tennessee plant into full commercial production over the next year. When do you start working on other sites as your intentions are to build out this model in other locations as well? Are you going to start doing that when you get to like uh, module three at commercial production? Are you going to identify more locations? Uh, can you address the growth plan a little? Sure. Uh, we, we'll, we'll start looking at the, the growth aspects here once we check off module one. And when I say check off, uh, within this 90 day period of time, the module will be running, once it's running to our expectations and we're getting the efficiencies and the recoveries that we are looking for, that's that's the trigger point, I'll call it, where we start to uh, initiate the ordering of modules two, three, and four. Uh, we have some sites on where we want to expand beyond Tennessee. That's We're planning that as we speak. So the everything is going to really kick off here in this 90 day period period of time. So that that's our our objective. We'll we'll address that to our shareholders as we get closer to that point in time. Uh, right now we're we're focused on getting module one up and achieving two and a half tons per day. Rick, when we cover uh, mining stocks, community relations is a huge thing. You need access and permission from the local communities to do what you need to do. Uh, in Tennessee, where you are, that's not an issue, is it? And maybe talk a little bit about your relationship with the community there. Sure. Yeah, we uh, we have an excellent relationship with the community and the economic development officers here. Uh, even the state of Tennessee reps have been very helpful. We've been able to, to get involved with some granting opportunities for employment and uh, for CapEx, things going forward as long as well as power uh, with the TVA. So we've uh, we got that all approved. Uh, the business development, economic development people here, they want to see jobs and employment and uh, growth in the community. And uh, we answer all of their, their questions and all of their their asks as far as the uh, the reality of us being a green and clean technology, being net zero focused, and uh, what that means for the community. Tennessee's become a state that's really focused on being, being more green and uh, getting uh, more focused on you know renewables. And when you talk about those things, their eyes and their ears perk right up. So it's been exciting to be able to bring that to the task. So Rick, as you talk to industry leaders about what Regenex is accomplishing, uh, what are some of the responses you're getting? Sure. Yeah, we were in Israel at the convention in Nashville this week, 
and speaking with leaders and, and uh, people that are really uh, plugged into the industry. And when they heard what we're up to and where we're at as far as a commercial facility, they were uh, they were super excited. They talked about us being the best dressed first out and uh, the opportunity that we have to really be part of that niche that's an industry issue uh, with the diesel in, in particular. So we're, uh, we're really uh, excited about that as well as we've been invited to be a speaker, presenter in June in Scottsdale, Arizona at the IPMI conference. Um, so that was really uh, icing on the cake. And what is IPMI for those that don't know? Uh, International Precious Metals. Greg, uh, you went over the economics of this uh, first plant build out um, and the growth plan, but we also talked about carbon credits and they're how this is a burgeoning thing and uh, investment dollars are willing to flow into this sector. There's an aspect of this story, too, where you can capitalize on that carbon credit business as well. There sir, certainly is. And we anticipate uh, to have a significant secondary re- re- revenue from, from that aspect. Once module one is is in, in, we'll call it full production, that's when we can start what we have to do from the auditing side to to give the data that's required to, to e- initiate that program. So we'll we'll start uh, down that path here in a very very short period of time, and uh, and be part of that program. I mean, as you've just spoken to, it, it's at the forefront of people's minds right right now. Uh, you know, we, we we've got a few things going going for us right now, which are 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 the fl- are the flavor of the month, if if you like the the whole concept of sustainability and and what that means to the marketplace today and to business. You know, at the forefront of the circular economy, large companies are, are are going to be really excited with us because we can, if they can partner with a company such as ours and tell their shareholders that that they are not only recycling old uh, old old materials, but using the recovered materials to produce new products, that that just fits into exactly what they want to share with their shareholder base. Excellent. Well, the company is Regenix Tech Corp. Website is regenix.tech. I'll link to that in the show notes. And I'll also link to a recent update that the company put out about the 90-day commissioning process. I thought it was very detailed and set investors' expectations very well. If you want an update on what is going to be occurring over the next 90 days as module one of this plant go uh, goes builds towards full commercial production, that email update will be in the show notes below. In Toronto, RGX is the ticker, and in the States, RGXTF, and also in Frankfurt, YRS. Those are the tickers, and I plan on visiting the plant, if you'll have me, Rick, uh, when you achieve uh, commercial production. Absolutely. Yeah, come visit. Looking forward to it. Great. Thank you, Rick, and thank you, Greg, for the update. Thanks, Bill. Thanks, Bill.